everybody, and welcome to another week of Let's Talk. I am your host, author, Dre Lett. Thank you for joining me for a fun-filled week where we inform, inspire, and motivate. We get you going during these tough times and beyond. So come on in the virtual room and have a seat so we can let's talk. I'm super excited, you guys. Today is the first day of April. And it is April Fool's Day. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and it's also what I call Comedy Friday. Yes. So we've got some exciting guests that are coming up. We've got actor and comedian Donald Lett. And we also have actor and comedian Dean Austin. They'll be up shortly. Super excited to have them here. And for those of you that are watching live, please, by all means, put in the comment section so I can get a chuckle or two of some of the funny pranks that you pulled today on April Fool's Day. I didn't get a chance to pull any. I can't believe it. I knew it was April Fool's Day, but I just I didn't get a chance. So you guys put some of that in the comments. I would just love to uh, see what you guys did. I, I saw Tiffany Haddish on uh, Facebook, she put uh, that she was pregnant. She put an ultrasound, like she was pregnant. So people are trying to figure out if it's true or if it's April Fool. So I thought that was kind of funny, but you guys definitely put some stuff in the comments so I can uh, share with everybody. As you see, scrolling down at the bottom of the screen, that is how you can watch the show every week on my Facebook page, which is Let's Talk Without the Drillette. There you can watch all the shows going back, you know, in July will be two years, you guys, going all the way back to July of 2020. And you can also um, watch the live shows every week. Every now and then I'll throw in an Odie but a goodie. And that's a segment that I've done previously. Um, and you can see how the show has evolved. <laughs> I was watching one last week and I was dying laughing because it truly has evolved. And there's always more room for growth and improvement. So um, at this time, you guys, I want to acknowledge my Let's Talk fam. These are the studio uh, or say virtual uh, studio people that tune in every week and watch it with me. They uh, ask questions. They comment. We have a good time together. And I always want to give them a shout out. Um, and also, if you're watching this pre-recorded, you too can be part of the Let's Talk fam, as I call them. All you have to do is just make sure you tune in Friday nights at 830 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and just join in and have some fun. And then for those of you that, that are too shy, I totally understand. But if you want to chime in, by all means, come on in the virtual room. So let me give a shout out to them and see who is checking in with me on this wonderful Friday. OK, yes. And, and again, I, I can't say enough how much I love and appreciate their support. Carla, hey girl, what's up? That's my girl from Atlanta. She she watches every week, faithfully, even if it's an Odie but a goodie. She's there. Okay, we've got somebody named Darren. Hey, Darren, how are you? Happy Friday. I'm so happy that you said hello because some probably will be shy. So hello, Darren. Thank you for joining the Let's Talk fam. Super excited to have you. Make sure you put in where you checking in from. Okay, cousin Diane. Hey, cousin. She's checking in from Vegas. Yes. She says, hello, everyone. It's April. It's spring. Nice weather, clear skies, and it's just beautiful out here in Vegas. Happy Friday. Yes, so glad to hear you guys got good weather in Atlanta. We have good weather as well. Um, it's not as warm as I want it to be, I mean, but it's still nice. It's like, I think it was in the upper 60s, low 70s. So, um, yes, cuz. Thank you so much for your love and support. Mwah. Love you, love you, love you. Uh, let's see here. Um Okay, and we got Hubby, who's one of the producers. He says he's watching from the man cave. Mwah, I love you, babe. <laughs> Tori is checking in from the D. Detroit, hey, girl, how are you? We got Wanda, my girl. Hey, Wanda, how are you? She's checking in from Atlanta. And let's see here. Okay, Darren says he's checking in from Arizona. All right, Darren, nice to have you. Absolutely. Okay, so... Let's look and see who's had some April Fool's stuff. Let me just go back up here in the comments section. And you guys, guess what? I got this new uh, this new little trick that we can do on the show. 
and uh, check that out. Yes, it shows Carla. She said she had a date with a singer, Maxwell. <laughs> Carla, that is so funny. <laughs> oh my gosh, you know, and, and if I had a prank to pull, if I wasn't married, I'd probably say I had a date with Prince if he was still here. Uh, <laughs> that's cute, Carla. I love it. I love it. I love it. You guys don't be scared. Go ahead and put in a uh, one of your April Fool's pranks. And what I'll do is um, while you guys are putting stuff in, I'm going to cut away to uh, show our sponsors. We have two new sponsors. I'm super excited and happy to have them. Uh, DTL Productions produced the ads, and I'm so excited. Um, but I also want to tell you that are out there, if you guys are interested in being a sponsor on Let's Talk, just make sure you inbox me on the Let's Talk with Author Drulette Facebook page. Or you can go to my website, and I'll scroll it down at the bottom real quickly for you. My website is dtlproduct.net. There you can scroll to the bottom of my website. It says, contact us. Shoot me a message. And if you're interested, um, somebody from our team will get back with you with the details. So you can either have Detail Productions produced an ad for you on your business or your community service project, what have you. Or you can have someone else produce it and just give us the feed and we'll run it on the show. So make sure you reach out to us and we'll get back with you. So that's my information scrolling down there, detailproduct.net. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and show these ads before I bring on my guests. Yes, indeedy. So... You guys, make sure you put in the comment section, again, what your April Fool's uh, joke was for today. I, I need a little uh, chuckle, chuckle before my guests come on. <laughs> okay. And without further ado, here we go. My name is attorney Angel White, and I am the founding partner with the law office of Angel S. White. Our office specializes in estate planning. We encourage all of our clients to have a comprehensive estate plan, which consists of a will, a power of attorney, and a healthcare directive. A will is simply a document that says where you want your belongings to go in the event that you pass, who you want to have the items that you have worked hard for. A power of attorney, on the other hand, is a document that states in the event that I become incapacitated for some reason, like dementia, or find yourself in a coma. This allows someone to step into your shoes to take care of the business of your life while you are incapacitated. They are also required to account for the things that they have done while you are incapacitated. So when you come to, you can know what happened in your life with respect to your property or your money. Lastly, we encourage every client of ours to have a healthcare directive. This is a very different document. This document says, in the event that I am in the hospital, I want to be able to speak to the doctors from this document if I am unable to speak for myself. This says, doctors, this is what I want. Whether you want to do not resuscitate or whether you want the doctor to know, doctor, give me everything you got to save my life. It also comes into play and allows you to speak post-mortem. It allows you to be, this is your last chance to be able to say, this is what I want to happen to my body, where I want my remains interned, how I want my ashes to be scattered or stored. These are very important documents and allows you to speak your life through this comprehensive estate plan. Again, if you or someone in your family finds yourself in need, either through the probate process or wanting to create an estate plan, please visit our website at www.aswhitelaw.com. That's www.aswhitelaw.com. Or feel free to call me at 770-880-3139. Here at the Law Office of A.S. White, we lawyer with love, and we will meet you or your family with a loving disposition. I look forward to hearing from you.
everybody. My name is Herman Williams. I'm a master herbalist, herbal practitioner. There's a difference. I'm not a medical doctor. I don't offer medical advice. I offer herbal healing advice. Okay, and as you can see, I offer a whole array of different herbs. Herbs are what helps the body to be healthy. Your body's made of minerals. Where do you get these minerals? From Mother Nature's herbs. Okay, and when you're diagnosed with high blood pressure, diabetes, you're not supposed to live with those diseases. You can reverse those things because if you don't, if you try to manage it, it will get worse over time. Let Mother Nature reverse your disease. Give me a call, 770-714-9107. Let's have a conversation about getting you off of those meds. I don't take people off their medications, their doctors does. I just assist them in getting off. All right, you guys, that was our sponsor. Super excited to have them on. Um, so you guys make sure you uh, check them out. Check them out, definitely. So I'm always about uh, promoting uh, small businesses and things of that nature. So awesome, excited. Okay, you guys, so without further ado, oh, you know what? Let me go back and see if anybody put any April Fool <laughs> with their April Fool uh, jokes was in here. Let's see. Um, no, Carla's the only one so far, but y'all still got time. You can put it in there. You can put it in there. Uh, some more people have tuned in. Hey, sis, I love you. She's tuning in from Cali. Uh, hey, Kojak, what's up? <laughs> and Herm is on here. Yes, he's one of the sponsors. And Wanda says she's on her way to South Carolina. Girl, you drive safe and um, I love up on your mom. Okay, you guys. So here we go. So my next guest, his name is Donald Lett. He's an actor and a comedian. He's been in lots of plays, um, some roles in some movies, and he's he does stand-up comedy, and he's... Um, coming in from Los Angeles, California. So without further ado, I would like to bring him to the virtual stage. You guys give him a warm welcome. Hey, Donnie. What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> yes, What's I forgot on? to mention, you're not stranger to the show. You've been on here before. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? I, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. How you doing, sis? Doing good. Yeah, okay, okay, y'all. That this is my baby bro. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe y'all would get the clue and see that the 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 the, the name. I know, yeah, people. right. Like, right hold Absolutely. on. They got the same last name. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it's well, funny because we, we started this. I said together. she introduced me like I was like, get up for Donald Let. I don't know this man. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, no. <laughs> I was messing with you. <laughs> I wanted you, you to, doing? you know, tell it. Yeah, huh? so we started the show. To, I said we started the show together, um, but you had some other commitments in yes, terms of you know, your entertainment, and um, I was scared to carry on. And you encouraged me. Said, "No, go ahead, do it. You could do it." And so here we are today, almost two years. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm so excited that you are on, and, and you're fantastic at it. <sighs> You are no. fantastic, sis. I love you on this. I mean, you're natural. You need your own show. Like, you you need to take this. Like, you need your like own talk show. I think I think that's I think that's next step. You know, this first step and then talk show is the next step because you you do have the presence. You have the chops. Um, you have. I'm really impressed. To be honest with you. I'm not even just saying that because you're my sister. I'm really impressed. This is the way you carry yourself. 
yourself on here. And I mean, you're oh, y'all, you, bro. My sister hey, is Devon, y'all. My sister is Devon. You got to speak it into existence, right? You got to speak it into existence. Oh, yes. <laughs> you got to speak it. Oh, oh yes. So, bro, everybody want to know. Come oh, on yes. now. What is your mm. thoughts? You you you've mm. been stand, stand up comedy for years. What did you think about Will mm -hmm. Smith getting up on that stage and doing what he did? I'm so disappointed. What's your thoughts? Yeah, well, well, you know, because I come from I come from acting and stand up, so I I could uh, come from both worlds, you know. Um, honestly, when I saw Will Smith go up there and he he walked on the stage. I thought maybe he was going to play around a little bit. Like, I oh, don't talk about her like that, you know, mm -hmm. because to my knowledge, they, they are familiar with each other. I don't know if they're like close friends, but they're familiar with each other. You know, they work together. You know, they might be entertainment friends. I could say that. Right. Mm -hmm. But it that slap just came out of nowhere. I mean, and. I really like after it happened, I quickly looked at Chris Rock's face because I put myself in that situation. Like, because he was telling a joke. I, I feel like he did not know Jada had amnesia. What's it called? Yeah. Am, am, am I saying it right? Am, 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 yeah. I didn't. Yeah. I, I honestly felt like, yeah, I felt like he didn't know. And I don't think he would have said it if he did know. Cause I think he knows her well enough to know where he could tell joke, you know what I mean? You, he knows mm -hmm. his audience with, with the Smiths, you know what I mean? So I I didn't feel like he was coming from like a malicious intent. He was coming from a comedy thing, you know? He was just mm -hmm. saying, hey, G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. Cause you ball, you know? Mm -hmm. As yeah. comedians, we do take stuff, we do see stuff in a different light. We, we could make fun at a funeral. Dude laying dead, dead as I don't know what. And we could make jokes about it, you know what I mean? We, it's bad, you know? We could think of something funny at a funeral, you know? It, it's just the way our minds work. You know, we could take tragedy and make it into comedy. It, it's, it's something that's wired in a comedian's brain, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, what, what Chris Rock would have made that same joke if he knew? Did he know? Did he not care? You know? Um, all that's kind of relevant because once you lay your hands on somebody... Mm -hmm. Now, you know what I mean? That's a different story because that could have been a conversation after the awards. Hey, he could pull Chris aside, Chris. You know, I, um, you know, we've been kind of going through it as a family. I didn't appreciate it. I know where you're coming from, but I just want to let you know I didn't appreciate it. Then Chris could probably say, it's like, oh, I'm sorry, man. You know, I, I'll just... If I, you know, it, you know, it could have been some grown-up stuff. You, gotta, you know, these guys, they're in their late 50s. Yeah. Chris Rock is 57 years old, you know, and to go up there and slap somebody, you know, he, you know, that that's like something a 17 year old would do mm -hmm. out of impulse, you know, um, I, you know, um, I thought that I laughed at the joke. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I thought it was hilarious because of G.I. J. too, because I was like, that's pretty funny. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You know, <laughs> like I said, I'm sorry. I had to pray about the Lord. I'm sorry. I laughed at this joke. And I laughed after everything happened, too. <laughs> I was funny. I was like, G.I.J. too. I was like, yes. Ball, like me, you know? <laughs> so, uh, but but the way he, the, but on a serious note, by him doing that, it was such a selfish act. Because... Oh. You know, I could ask people right now, who, who else won the Oscar? Do you know who won the Academy Award? Do you know who else was on that stage beside mm -hmm. them? Um, yeah. Do you know? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? You're like, everybody who won that award that night is going to be associated with that. And that's not fair. Mm -hmm. You know, it, what if this is your first Academy Award? You know, this is mm -hmm. the mega of entertainment industry. That means everybody, all your peers, all your people that you work with have voted and said that you deserve this award. 
and to mm -hmm. be brought on this on the stage to be acknowledged and to have it ruined by somebody in their feelings. And I, I'm, I'm going to keep it real. Get he on. was laughing. He was. Jada gave him that look. Yep. Yep. Jada gave him that look. Yeah, Ooh. he was. He thought it was funny just like I did. So but you when know he what? gave him that look, now mm -hmm. he felt like he was impelled. To, mm -hmm. I was going to say. He felt impelled a, to do something. Like, oh. Mm -hmm. And as a black woman, you know, let's keep it real. My husband would never do that. But let's just say if he did, right? The minute he stood up out of his seat, I would have been like, the bag, millions. You better sit. I've been pulling his jacket. Sit down. What you doing? You know, like, don't mess with the money. Like, you about to mess up all these millions. Exactly. I get, I get you want to exactly. honor her, but she should have been like, uh-uh, yeah. yelling across the stage. Well, something. She just yeah. sat there like, mm -hmm, get him. That's crazy. Yeah, she did. She did. I was like, listen, yeah. I said, this is this, you know, this is the Academy Awards. I said, you know, um, they don't they don't particularly play. You know, I mean, they're, they're the mecca. Like, you do something there, you're like, it's gonna be hard to convince anybody else to get you work because Paramount, Warner Brothers, all of them, you know, they all know each other, all these high execs. They know, you know, Will Packer, he God bless Will Packer, you know. Producing mm -hmm. the Oscars, dope. Um, they all know each other, so you know. Mm -hmm. I was talking to a couple of my friends that are in the industry, and they're like, you know, I feel will it's going to be hard for Will to work, you know. And I said, well, I said honestly, I don't think it's going to be hard for him to work. He's Will Smith. He's talented. I ain't gonna take that away from him. He's super talented, but I think what's going to happen now is that he. You know, they're going to might seem as a little volatile, like, you know, he, if he is in a scene or something and somebody's talking off stage and he gets a little mad, they're like, uh oh, what, you know, how, you know, we seen like how mad he can get, you know, that, you know, and executives see that and they're like, do we want to take a risk on hiring Will Smith if something, because, you know, when you shoot a movie, nothing really goes right at the first two months, you know. Something may happen. It's like, is he going to, you know, and it's like those questions that they're going to have, you know what I mean? That That's, you know what I mean? And now he kind of burned bridges amongst his peers. You heard Jim Carrey speak about him. Yeah. You know, everybody in the Oscars, you know, kind of look at him sideways. The only people that are going to ride with him is Denzel because, you know, that's his mentor. He's going to ride with him. I'm sure there's Martin Lawrence. There's people that are going to ride with him, but there's also people in the audience that are like, eh. you know, let me see stay away from you because I want to protect my career too. You know, like, you know, you, you're not, you know what I mean? I hate to say it, they do that. They got to protect themselves. You know what I mean? They got to make a living. And they, that next day, they were around Will Smith and like, oh, so that means you like, mm -hmm. you know? That next day, he should have went I, on I camera. Really, and, <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to yeah. overspeak you. Yeah, he should have. And he should he, what he should, what he really should do, him and Chris Rock should have a conversation. Either they, he go to his house, and they go to his house, and really sit down like men, because I think Chris Rock was really, he went on stage not too long, like what, a couple of days ago, and said, "Hey, you know, yeah, I'm still processing on what happened." Like, you know what I mean? Like, you get slapped amongst millions upon millions of viewers. Like, even though the Oscar haven't been viewed as much. They still get millions of, you know what I mean? People still mm -hmm. make it a, a Oscar night parties and stuff. You know what I mean? And, and, and thinking of it this way, children watch the Oscars. Yes. Young actors coming up. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh my God. And I felt the room. And, and and then they had the nerve to put on a teleprompter another joke for Chris Rock to say. I'm like, no, 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 no. Chris Rock, he didn't like he didn't want to he like he wanted to leave the stage like right. There. He's like, I'm done with this, you know. He, yeah, presenting uh yeah, you can <laughs> tell like I don't care who's coming next, you know what I mean? I'm right. what? And and don't mess with Tony, his little brother Tony. Ooh. Now, Tony a real one. I met Tony at the comedy union. And and if anybody gonna do something, it's gonna be Tony. Tony wrote <laughs> deep. He wrote yeah, Tony wrote I wouldn't be surprised if something if Tony's like, look for him right now. Cause Tony's a good dude. Like he's funny. Right. 
I met him at the Comedy Union. And I told him, hey, man, great set. He said, thank you, my brother. I appreciate that. He said, hey, y'all, let's roll. When he said, y'all, let's roll, I kid you not, it was like 20 brothers, six, five, just, they got up all the, I was like, where did they come from? Like, who, who, what's going on? Like, I was like, yo, he's wow. rolling like that? And that's wow. Tony Rock. Mm. Chris Rock's is probably not about that. It's always the little brother that is always the, ah, the scrappy one. It's always the, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, because you know, I, I don't know if you saw the um the tweets from him or the Instagram no. where he was like, Yeah, I guess they asked him, should uh Chris Rock accept Will Smith's apology? And, and Tony said no. Ooh. And he said it's on. Oh and that's what I figured it would be, you know what I mean? And yeah, and and there's a whole thing of like, okay, if there's another kind of comedian on there. He would never slap D.L. Hughley. He would never slap, you know, so forth. And I know this. He he wouldn't, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. There's a few comedians that I know. If he stayed, if him just leaving that chair, that comedian would have met him halfway. You know, there's a there's a bunch of them. So I just think that Will needs to like. He really needs to learn from this. Um. Yeah, you know. Um, and, and really process like not just what he did, but how it affected all the other nominees because he just resigned, Donnie. He just resigned before we came on air. Mm, he resigned yeah. from the academy. Yeah. Well, you know so what? What does that mean? Does that mean he can't get an <laughs> Oscar anymore? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. He, he resigned. It's it's uh yeah, you can't go, can't talk, don't call me, don't you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And, and yeah, mm -hmm. and they probably had a private conversation with him, like, hey, um, this is what we're going to do. We're going to either take the Oscar from you or we're going to ban you. And it's almost mm -hmm. like when your boss, when you know you're about to get fired, <laughs> <laughs> and you know you everybody and coworkers looking at you side, we're like, oh man, like, oh, you still here? Like, <laughs> you, know, you still here? Like, and you're like, oh hell no, you know, you know what? I quit. You know what I mean? You ain't gonna fire me. Your ego gets you ain't gonna fire me. I quit. You know what I mean? That's what that happened. You know, like, oh no, no, I ain't gonna go out like that. No, 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 no. I resign. You know, yeah. and then you know, it's probably good for everybody involved. They're like, you know what? This is thank you. Thank you. You know, good luck with, with your statue, you know. <laughs> but and this is like his first Oscar, you know. This is your first Oscar yes. win, and this is how it went down. It don't even feel like it's your Oscar no more. I feel like he didn't win nothing. I feel like I he, he's going to win a, a police. He's going to win a police case. That's what he's going to win. You know, he should give it to the police officer and have him give it to him. Oh, that's what he should do. That in a lawsuit. Yeah, that's probably. What, mm. Yeah. <clears throat> they said that they asked him to leave and he refused. I heard that. Oh my god. My so I'm like, well, next... how'd you ask him? <laughs> I said, you need to ask him with two 300 pound brothers. That's what you need to ask him with. You can't go up to him, but excuse me, Mr. Smith, uh, <laughs> would you mind exiting the premises? No, of course, like, no, nah, man, you don't wave my face, man. You know what I mean? That's why we're okay, well, fine, you know, you know yeah, because I was like, how'd you ask him? You know what I mean? Because if you come with like, yeah, you got to come with like, hey, um, you need to leave, brother, now, yeah. you know, that's what yeah. you need to do, but you can't, you know, I think. His ego is also gone. His ego, he has a big ego. Because the ego will have you, because think about it. You had an award show, you had the Oscars. Your ego has to be really up there to, to feel like you can just walk on stage and slap one of the presenters. And then curse. Like, curse at him. Really? And you know somebody yes. said- you, And then somebody, curse from the audience. Somebody said he wasn't too worried about when August Alcina had his whatever in her mouth, but he, he say her name and it's a problem. <laughs> Woo! Huh? Yeah, that, that's a, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'm like, Entangled well, it. okay. Yeah, I says, listen. And, <laughs> and you really, that's why a lot of people are saying it can't be just about that joke. Yeah. Something else is going on. That joke just triggered whatever was happening in his mind. Mm -hmm. He was already stressed out over something else. Mm -hmm. And he used Chris Rock to take it out of. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Yeah. I and so. I felt raw. I felt bad for Chris. I felt bad for I Chris because I saw his face. He felt yeah. very uncomfortable. He felt very like, I mean, he's always going to be known now the dude who got slapped at the Oscars. Like how, I'm like, there. you know what I mean? Like you. <laughs> <laughs> I love Chris Rock. You forever known to get slapped at Oscars. And then, <laughs> and then he leaned into it too. Like, ah, what you going to do? Well, well, what you going to do? You know, like, and we're, <laughs> You know, and he he slapped him so hard he literally detorted his head. I was like, oh, I was like, oh man. And Will got off like, uh huh. Like no, I was like, oh my god. He had that, said, that red fox walk when he got. He did. Like, and, and Chris Rock, he handled like a professional, but you could tell he was just like, he literally slapped him into like I don't know what just happened. That's that's a hard slap where you like, oh what this. <laughs> What, what transpired? What, what, where? Like Chris Rock was like, where am I? Like you know that look like where? Where am I? I thought I was at home. Like he literally slapped him to another dimension. Like he thought he was in New Jack City again. <laughs> oh, I said, I said, oh man! I said, I said, oh, I felt it. I was like, oh my god! I said, I was like, he slapped him so hard. I had to like. Wait a minute. Did that just happen? Like <laughs> I thought it was a joke. And the way it worked. I was like, oh man. Oh, and I was man. like, really? And when they and you hear Will from the audience and they, they muted him because he was cursing. I was like, oh. <laughs> and the whole room was just like, you have all these people with elegant gowns and dresses and <laughs> you know and, <laughs> and they sit up there like, oh. I mean, you got you got, you got all these white people there, like the white of the white. I mean, I white know. of white. You know what I mean? You know, and and we do that, and they're like, mm -hmm, "I told you, <laughs> I told you, I'm gonna go off." This turned into the BT Awards, you know? <laughs> it did. It made us look bad. We it turned to the Source Awards. I was waiting for Sid Knight to come out. I said, "What, what, I said, what in the world?" Slept the. <laughs> I said, man, what did the hand, what did the face say to the hand? You know, I was like, oh man, I just Ooh. and they keep showing I that said, picture of his forever. face going like this as he <laughs> I said, yeah, I said he forever will be that dude. Yep. You know, I was like, yep. Chris Ooh. Rock, man, you know, man, you hey man, you, you were a presenter. I didn't even know you was a presenter, man. I you was up there, I thought you was a stunt man. I was like, <laughs> I was like <laughs> <laughs> Yo, <laughs> I, that's what I'm thinking. That's one of the thing when people people gonna forever remember this Academy Award. Oh yeah, that's when Chris Rock got slapped. Like, that's so I said, you know, and he got to live with that. You know, yeah, he has I to live with that. He is a victim. But see, Will Smith too. is not even remorseful, Donnie. You know, he should have came no, out he's the not. next day. He should have came out next day with, with a video crying in the camera. Chris, I'm sorry. Not remorseful. He ain't shown his face. Nothing. He like, yep. Mm -hmm. I slapped him. Like, yeah. yeah. Just no remorse. Yeah. Mm. He should have got Oprah Winfrey right away on the phone. Yo, let me do right. an interview. Did an interview. Yep. And you know yep. I me. Mean? I'm sure he's getting like. Yep. I'm sure he's getting calls about. I'm sure about. Hey, let's do an interview. And I'm sure, you know, like you have to feel some kind of way. I mean, you have to. If you if you are human, you have to feel some kind of way, even if you felt like you was right, you have to feel bad. Yes. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like Chris Rock is not about that. Like, mm -mm. you know, he, he would tell if he was, he would been got you. He's yeah. not about that. He I probably considered Chris you a friend. Mm -hmm. He probably Terrible. considered you a friend, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it hurts probably more to him. Like, man, what did I do that bad man for make you feel like hey. you have to like risk your career to lay hands on me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, what you know, did, I, did I really say something that wrong, you know? And I'm disappointed in Denzel. I love Denzel. But for Denzel to say, mm -hmm. pull him to the side on commercial and say, man, we, the higher you get, this is when a devil comes from me. No, 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 no. You're supposed to scold him and say, look, this ain't how we do things. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. and maybe he did exactly. say that. I, I hope he, I hope somebody put him in check. Yeah. 
we all make mistakes. Yeah. And, um, but but that's one. And, 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 and to do that in front of Denzel Washington, I said, you got Denzel Washington in there. Denzel's one of like my all time favorite actors. And yes. I don't care who says what. I can't, you know what I mean? You, you don't want to embarrass yourself in front of that kind of elite performer. Yep. Exactly. I do you know what I mean? Work. Like, yeah. You know, and it's like, and that's going to be the next thing. Do I want to work with Will Smith? I literally, they had Pursuit of Happiness on the other night, and I mm. couldn't watch it the same way. I, I couldn't watch it the same way. I, I, I really felt different. I can't, you know, now they're running a lot of his movies now, you know, and I'm like, oh, y'all are just dirty. Y'all capitalizing on this dude. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, really showing <laughs> Men in Black. When's the last time? Y'all never show Men in Black on the movie channels. I've been had direct TV. I ain't never seen it. Now it's Men in Black, Pursuit to Happiness, you know, mm. Six Degrees of Separation, you know? I'm like, really? Mm. And I don't know. It's just, I, I really, yep. I, he owes Chris an apology. It's more than an apology. Um, he could apologize to Chris, but he can't. I don't know what he could do. I say I call mean, Gail King. Happened, yeah. it's, it's going to live. Yeah. Call Gail King. You know, it's going to live. And I mean, you yeah. got to think about his family, you know? Yeah. I mean, Chris Rock has kids. Will Smith has children. I know. I mean, you know, are you thinking about like, you know, how this is going to affect them? Mm -hmm. You know, go on camera and hug them and say, "Man, I'm sorry." Yeah, that's what I would do. So, I know that's it. I, I, something has to be done. Yes, sir. And um, I don't know. I, I just, it's, it's, it's just, it's just embarrassing, you know. It it's is. just embarrassing. It is. I, I, um, well, bro, we got to have you come you know, back on. Tell everybody what you got working on next. We want to know. And we got to have you come back on. Cause you, cause you okay, well. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Yes, I appreciate it. Well, I'm working on my one-man show um, right now. Okay. So um, I'm hoping that will go up. It's called Homeless Man. It's a comedy. I've been wanting to do it for a while. And I got find the final touches on it. So. I'm going to be looking for a home to actually start that up and I'll be doing stand up and I'm still auditioning. I'm still out there. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm still working those clubs and everything. So, you know, Hey, come out, see your boy, you know, I'm still doing it. I'm still, still doing my thing and, okay. you know, conjuring up stuff. I'm, 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 I'm writing. So yeah, you're going to see, you're going to see lots of me. Yeah. 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 And you got to come back on Let's Talk, definitely. Got to have you back on. Everybody's yes. going on about the oh, comments. Oh, definitely, sis. And, I love you. Oh, I love I you, love too. You. And everybody, just so you know, everybody's saying that everything you're saying is correct. It was ghetto, all kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, make sure you go back and check out the comments. But they, they agree with you 100% that that was just dead wrong. Mm. Dead wrong. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, it's a sad situation. And, uh, and I feel for Chris, you know, and I really hope that, you know, no. they could do something, you know, just you ain't got to be friends no more. But just as men, you know, mm -hmm. maybe they have to do a one on one or something, you know, that. <laughs> yeah. Scrap it out. I don't know. They do something, you know, you can't something. get slapped like that. And yeah. And black community, they're going to they're going to ridicule you. We love you, Chris Rock, but boy. I'm not gonna laugh again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chris! I love Chris. Chris Jones, still, oh, still geez. feeling that vibration there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I can see him now having a punching bag and have Will Smith's picture on it, and he just, come on, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, just, <laughs> like just knocking it out. You know, <laughs> he don't want no people named Will. You know, he, he yeah. What's your name, Will? I don't like you, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Well, you gotta come <laughs> back on. Um, your last name is Smith. Leave me alone, you know. <laughs> I will. I will. I definitely will. Yeah. I love they all y'all. I love you, sis. You're doing a love wonderful you. job. I love Aww. everybody on here. God bless. He's gonna come back. He'll be back, y'all. Definitely. 
Oh, yeah. Will you stay oh, safe yeah. out there in Cali and I oh, love yeah. you. Keep on these for me and tell the wife what's up. Okay, I will. Okay. Mwah. Bye. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you guys, that's my brother, uh, Donnie, Donald Led. I call him Donnie. He is hilarious. He's funny. So um, just want to have him on and kind of get a little chuckle and give us his take on how things are. So um, just want to thank him for coming on. Let's talk. Absolutely. This, this isn't his first time coming on. So thank you, Donnie. Love you. Mwah. Okay, so my next guest, he's also an actor, actor and a comedian. You guys know him. He's been on many times as well. Mr. Dean Austin, my cuz, he's going to come on. And he's been doing stand-up um, and movies since the 90s. So he definitely is going to tell us his take. And he's going to go over the what's hot topics with us as well. So let me welcome to the virtual stage my cuz, comedian, actor, Dean Austin. What's up, cuz? <laughs> What's happening? How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Just just laughing, listening to y'all talk about Chris Rock. I know. I feel bad. I love Chris Rock, but but who? Yeah, that's got to be. He gonna need some therapy behind that. That's my dude, man. Chris, I love Chris. I know Chris, and uh, Aww. man, I know he he handled it very well. I wouldn't have, yeah. I, you know. Once you put hands on me, I'm not a comedian anymore. Ooh. I changed real fast. Matter of fact, before I show, I think I'm just going to start slapping people before I get to the stage, just so they'll know <laughs> they can't try me. I'm going to figure to do it, I'm going to walk up to them and just slap them. Bow. Yep. Like, so, what happened? Hey, that's just in case you decide you want to rush the stage. <laughs> if you want to rush the stage, you better think twice. <laughs> Cedric the Entertainer, he said the other day, he was doing stand-up somewhere. He said, I'm like, you know, if you slap me, you get slapped back. <laughs> hey, look, most comedians, ninety nine percent of the comedians will will take will will be after you if you slap us. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's different when somebody punch you. You know, if a grown man punch you, that's like, oh, dude, I can't believe you just hit me. But when somebody slap you, that's humiliating. That's like somebody throwing a shoe at you. Yeah, Ooh. same thing. In front of fifteen million people too. But you know, he, he he handled it well because had he laid hands on him, then it would have been. Of course. Know, of course, mm -hmm. of course, I agree with you, Dre. I agree with you, but I ain't gonna lie to you. That <laughs> you wouldn't be no academy if you punched me. I don't care who it is. We get down. Okay, look, look, on his way back, it was gonna be a bit. It'd have been a, a mic stand, a mic something would have hit him in the back of the head. <laughs> on his back, they'd have been like, "These Negroes are acting up." I don't care. Cause you hit me. You hit me. Think about it. Over a joke. I know. A joke. And what was 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 crazy is it was a joke that wasn't a bad joke. It wasn't, and she's been on TikTok saying <laughs> that she doesn't care that her hair is short. So I left my hair the way it is, and I told them when I was going to do parks, movies, and things. I said, "No, I'm going to be me because I love my hair the way it is, and I don't and care what people sudden, think." Mm -hmm. Yeah. All of a sudden, she give she give Will Smith the stank eye. He stopped laughing. <laughs> <laughs> he just, and he just got up calmly <laughs> and he sat back down like he was at the house that's crazy that was insane that, like I told my brother if that had been me as a black woman I would have been thinking hmm dollars and cents millions I would have oh, like, yeah. <laughs> ran up behind him and grabbed him something <laughs> Don't mess up the bag. Don't mess up the bag. <laughs> no, nah, man, he would have he'd have been mad at me because that suit would have been tore up when I got through with him. <laughs> he'd have been like, he would have been, he it'd have been a fight. I'm sorry, it'd have been a fight. Yeah, I, I can't, I can't, I can't take it out. You know, and the sad thing about I don't know if your brother touched on it, but when someone does that, then that means that almost makes it okay for other people to do it. Right. You know, it's almost like every comedian, even whether they say it or not, they know that when they see something and they, they can they feel they can follow suit, especially somebody like Will Smith that's famous, you know, all over Oscars, they think it's just normal to walk on stage and challenge somebody mm. that told a joke. If you don't like the joke, leave. Exactly. If you don't like the joke, you, you can write a you can write a, a, a complaint. Yeah. You can talk to somebody. But exactly. if you come put your hands on me, it's it's a different ball game. Exactly. And and, and I, told, I told this to my brother as well. I don't understand why he was so offended. She went on national or red table talk or whatever, talking about sleeping with her son's friend in their home. 
You didn't get upset with that. You didn't go beat him up. So no, 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 no. He ain't he ain't tripping off that because you know that's a kid, and and he they they roll like that. It is what it is. Let's be real. He was a young kid. Wow. Was a kid. So you're right. But I will tell you this: when it comes to Okay, so I, I said this to someone else, another friend of mine. I said there are certain comedians he wouldn't have done that to. Oh, think about it. That's Chris true. Rock, I love Chris, humble dude, slim, lightweight, very, very meek, but a very great, good comedian. You know, his comedy's great. But he ain't gonna push up on DL. Mm. He ain't gonna yeah, push up on Joe Curry. Yeah. He definitely ain't gonna push up on me. Mm. Because what a man does, you, you have to think about this. What a man does, a man sizes up another man before he does has makes any actions towards him or or do anything. That's just how we do. It, it's just it's 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 like two lions in the Serengeti. Okay. That lion see another lion, right? Mm -hmm. You look at that lion. He sizes them up. He goes, he, hey, let me let me see this brother rock. Okay, all right, got some big cojones. He big dude. I think I better, I better relax. Better, better <laughs> lay on my back and show on my stomach. <laughs> yeah, because that's how it is. Mm -hmm. So, so that, like, like your brother was saying about Denzel uh, uh, stepping to him mm -hmm. and not actually reprimanding him, I understand fully what he's saying. But one man, usually, one man don't reprimand another man, especially when it's their friend. On that level, it's one of the things where you don't really go that route. You just try to calm that person down. So I understand where Denzel's coming from. Okay. But because 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 Will Smith was heated. He was heated. He was when he was cursing. I never seen hey, Will. That was the best acting I ever seen. He did. He's done. <laughs> he was you cussing. better keep go go go, mom. He was <laughs> good, mama. He thought he was in, he thought he was in Philly, oh, right? <laughs> Oh, yeah, he, he got real black. I ain't never seen Will get that black. He don't oh. in his album. You know, he clean movie is I'm clean Will. But yeah. he was like he was down there on Fifth Street on the east side. <laughs> to cut somebody. Don't get no and Chris Rock was just stunned. Chris Rock didn't know what to do. Rick, man. Mm. I'm talking with Chris because like I said, I know Chris and Chris, like your brother said, it, 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 he was devastated. He was he he couldn't even finish. His his not his joke, but he couldn't finish delivering the monologue of what he had to say before bringing up the presenting the Oscar to the next person. He couldn't do it. Mm. He he kind of fumbled around, but then you know he was his head was kind of shook up from the slap, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then he had to get his he had to get everything right and get off stage. And even they had some some photos, some video of him backstage. And backstage he looked devastated. He looked, Hell yeah. Oh, and you yeah. know, it's what I'm also upset about, you know, owning a production company, but you know, with Will Packard, he was the first African American, first African American uh, production of the Oscars. Yeah. This was his moment to shine. Yes. And you bring some ghetto source award type. I'm like, really? Right. Oh, man. Love, Summer of Soul, all that. All that was, oh, was right? oh. pushed to the side because of this madness. And the first madness. This guy got his Oscar, you all that. Nobody even knows. Nobody. A Amy Schumer said it, and and she was she was giving a shout out to all the writers because a friend of mine, Sula McCullough, is a writer for the Oscars. Really oh, okay. good, very good, funny comedian. And she was giving all the writers a you know shout out. And at the end, she said, "I can't. I don't even want to address the madness that was going on because it was madness." Mm. And she said that you know. So yeah, it's it's bad. It's bad. It it, it it's shocking. It, it's hurtful. It's devastating. Mm. It makes you you not you don't want to see Will Smith in a certain light because we've always seen him in a certain way, which right. is common. but when you start, you know, like like your your brother said about watching Pursuit of Happiness and he couldn't watch it. He can't see it the same. Yeah, yeah. all you see is pursuit of slappiness. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't walk around slapping people. Pow! I need some money. Pow! Slap the kid, slap his own kid. Pow! <laughs> There's a good thing. He needed to be slapping Jada for sleeping with a kid. Like yeah, exactly. Exactly. But you know, you know, she I, I don't condone domestic abuse. Let me clear that up. I'm just saying neither do I, but she needs to be put in check. He needs she, to if he don't do it, he need to have somebody else do it. How about that? He can have a woman slapper. Yeah. I'm he need a female slapper. He could be the male slapper and get a female slapper. There you go. And a female slapper could be like, hey Jade, I need to holler at you for a second. Bow. That's what sleeping with that kid. 
I'm sorry. That's one thing you don't do is mess with my money. I'm sorry. You don't mm -mm. Right. mess right. with his money. That's crazy. Yeah. But the, the positive, what's that? I said he was laughing until she gave him that look. Of course. Of course. It was funny. It was. Course, it was funny. But was. but you know, Ricky Gervais said it the best. This is this is this is a comedy. This is how every comedian should think about it. Ricky Gervais said, if it was me, I wouldn't have attacked her head. I'd attack her sleeping with that kid. Yes. Her yes. open marriage. I'd attack that from the yes. stage. Because what you gonna you what what that's that's out there. She you did know? it in the house where Will Smith lived. Like, <laughs> what was what was he doing eating Cheerios in the living room while the, while the, <laughs> while the boys upstairs talking about I want some tricks. Go get me some <laughs> tricks, man. Nah, Will down there eating Cheerios. Don't go down there. You might get punched. Matter of fact, go, go out the back. <laughs> I can't believe it. Look, that's what Slug's friend. She probably was scoping him out when his son brought him home. She's oh, like, yeah. She was looking at him. She's like, mm, you got a nice little booty. <laughs> Ooh, look at you, boy. Ooh, what's those? What's those? What's those? Ooh, you got you, you got you some converse. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get with that. Oh, that's cool. Don't you Snapchat me. <laughs> oh, give me your son's friend. That's terrible. So, what you think about Clarence Thomas? Wow, oh, man. Oh, cuz, cuz, let me tell you something about Clarence Thomas. <laughs> it's full here. Okay, first, he was married to a black woman, right? Her I didn't know that. Okay, yeah, he married to Kathy. Kathy, I forgot her last name. Kathy. Okay. The white one's named Virginia. That's the one at Insurrection. Maybe because okay. she thought, maybe she thought because her name was Virginia, she can do with it. Because DC is close to Virginia, she yeah. said, I, just, I own this, this, this. I own this place. <laughs> this is my site. East Coast is my coast. I'm Virginia. <laughs> so, 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 think about this. This, this is, this is, this is very. You got to be a fool to think you can go up there and and just be a part of that in the first place. Right. No black woman would ever went over and tried to do that. You know why? Because a black woman is not gonna climb nothing. No, she ain't gonna mess up her heels. She ain't gonna mess up her dress. Nails, her she nails. nails. She be like, uh, Shay, Shay, Keisha, what's up? Now we ain't going. Call them and see what they doing. Call them. We no call them. <laughs> we gonna get an insurrection on the phone. We ain't gonna go up. And, no, we ain't climbing nothing. No. Nope. Cause you know, and you know, look, you get all sweaty. You know when, when black women get sweaty, their hair just. <laughs> You know, <laughs> can you imagine she she come through? She got nice perm. She's like, yeah, I'm getting ready to go with insurrection. Come on, they come out look like they look like they straight from the tribe. <laughs> and you know, it, it is deep because she had the audacity to text the chief of staff. Y'all don't give up. Keep pressing on. We can't let them rob. It's like. Are you hearing yourself? Like you're married to Supreme Court justice. Like, man, I don't even you know, understand. Her race came first. Forget him. Exactly. It's another brother. Exactly. I don't care if you're Supreme Court justice. I don't care who you are. You could be yeah. president. You could be Will Smith. You could be anybody. It don't really matter. Mm -mm. You still a brother. You got to remember that. And then and, and and she actually looked past. She's like, forget that. You know, I'm down with the insurrections. <laughs> That's yeah. what I was, I was like, you're married to a black man, are you not? <laughs> and he a fool for not knowing where she went. <laughs> like, what are you going? I'm going out for coffee. <laughs> well, you got a camouflage jacket and a helmet. That's how I always dress. When I'm coffee. It's it's rough out there these days. <laughs> Like, you know, like, oh my god, that is crazy! And I hope they, I hope he doesn't get away with it. They need to tell him to resign. Just go, on, just go. On. Yeah, just, just just let it go, man. Let it go. Let it so, go. That's probably why he was in the you hospital. Know, and you know, and you know, Sister Kathy called him up. I told you when you left me. I see what happened. <laughs> you left your roots. You over there with Virginia over there. Look at that. You all caught up in things, Clarence. <laughs> <laughs> and, she, and now she's going to go down in the history books. I mean, his legacy is already trash, in my opinion. But oh, now it's really <laughs> trash. Like, dude, I don't even understand the straight, stupid.
stupid all day to stress. Yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It oh my gosh. So, wow. so what, what are your thoughts about the NFL saying that you got to have a woman or a minority as a coach? Okay. First of all, I, the NFL to me is a waste of time because of the simple fact that they actually would not acknowledge or give Kaepernick a chance mm. to actually play mm. for, for, because, because he has beliefs or he still has beliefs, but at the time he had beliefs about, about, about uh, the underprivileged blacks and, and people of color. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so the only reason this is, this is all a ploy to get actually people to come back. Cause there's still, still a lot of people that's not back deep okay. in, in the field, like in the past. I'm not the only one. There's a lot of, a lot of brothers, and sisters, a lot of people, not just brothers and sisters that are not back involved with the NFL. Okay. They start watching, buying merch. They, it, it's to get money back. Because remember how the beginning of the NFL, it was like Black Lives Matter was all over the field? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Black no Lives Matter now. You don't see nothing on that field, do you? No. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. Mm -mm. So mm -mm. I'm like, okay, all right. But no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, personally, they had a female, that, from what I understand, a female that was a coach in the NFL. Okay. And they have a few black people, like, you know, top dogs speck, speckled into the the NFL, but none that are like general managers or of anything like that. Power of that. I don't know what what kind of position they're gonna give black people in the NFL. That's what I want to know. They said offense, so that means you can be what a punter's coach. You oh, know, yeah. What you gonna do? I mean, you can be offensive coordinator. Eh, maybe I don't know if they'll have a female offensive coordinator, but who knows? But it's all about to try to to get their their fan base back. Yeah. Basically, yeah. yeah. That's what well, they about. need to do the right thing and put some African Americans or minorities in key positions, coaching right, positions. Right, 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 right. Like, because because we we make up ninety percent, at least eighty five percent of the NFL. Yeah, Even, yeah. Just, if no black people, black men were in the NFL, no one would watch it. It'd be so boring. Mm -hmm. You're right. Like, okay, we got to pass from Smirnoff to Okelby, Okelby <laughs> O'Malley, and he's down. Ankle broken. Don't know why, but his ankle just gave out. <laughs> no defense. <laughs> no defense. They just running. <laughs> they run like, who gonna catch me? <laughs> you gotta catch yourself before you cross the uh touchdown finish line. Touchdown. Oh man. And maybe that's your boycott. Maybe the players should say we ain't playing. Yeah. Yeah, but you know what? The, the reason the players won't because money, money, money. Oh, yeah. Money. You know, you need your money. That's why people cross picket lines. Don't yeah. cross the picket lines. And people say, hey, I got I got a wife, I got kids. You know, I got a bills. I got bills. I got to go on the other side of the picket line. Mm. People do that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, but I know who would be really good in the NFL. You said who would be good in the NFL? I know who would be a really good player for the NFL. Who? Will Smith. <laughs> Because <laughs> if somebody tapped him wrong, he's gonna slap the mess out of him. <laughs> You'd be a good coach. I said you were a coach. You did you did a damn bow. <laughs> you know, I was asking my husband this. Do guys even slap each other? I always thought guys no, 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 no. That's a, that's a sweet thing. That's uh that's 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 soft. Men don't say don't men just go, just go oh like because that's soft. You know, you know, kind of sissy type. I mean, men don't do that. Men yeah. don't. Yeah, I was he wondering did. about that. I was he like, did it one other time where there was a guy that tried to, in, in in Europe tried to kiss him, and he slapped him, but he went like he hit him like in the face and went, "Hey, get back," you know. Oh but, yeah, I remember that now. Remember yeah. that? So yeah, he's he's long for slapping. But if he look, if he punched Chris Rock, that would have been that would have been worse. Because Chris would have fell. Chris could have fallen with the slap. He just got lucky. Because just think, okay, think about this. Just think if Chris got hit and he fell down and he hit his head. Oh. Unconscious. Or worse, he hit his head and you die. Because when, when you're unconscious and you hit, your head just falls where it falls. Yeah. Oh, my if God. If something like that happened, it's a wrap. Mm. In jail for sure for that, you know. That's but horrible. California law says that you got to be a victim. So him not wanting to press charges, the police can't just go get him anyway? It's, he he, killed him. he don't have to press charges. Wow. You know, mm -hmm. if, if if it was really bad, like worse, mm -hmm. the, the popo could have just drug him in. Okay. But they saw it as a slap. Like we said, how many how many men slap? You know, we saw it as a slap. Like slapping? 
He slapped him. He slapped him like he was a pimp, and he owed him fourteen dollars. Right? Wasn't that kind of a gay move? Like, mm -hmm. it was sweet cheeks. I'm telling you, it was a sweet. <laughs> sweet <cheeks. Ugh. laughs> Don't do it no more. <laughs> I'm like, oh, stick it, stick it now. Come out, now. Come out for the people who don't know. Dudes, dudes if the people don't, don't know, now you know. It, yeah. Because a grown man would have been, you know. Right, you know, right. And I love, I love Chris, but he had his hands behind his back because he didn't, he was, he didn't think anything was gonna happen. And, right. and he, look, if you see a man coming at you and he's not smiling, and you did a joke, or you did it, it, not even a joke, if you did something wrong, mm -hmm. you might want to put your hands in front of you. Oh, I'm. You're gonna see my knuckles. You're gonna see my hands. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm prepared. I'm always, I'm always on the edge like that. I was, I was raised to be always alert. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. mailman snuck up on me one time. I almost punched the mailman. <laughs> He's like, "What you say?" I said, "You got any checks?" He said, "Yeah, I ain't got no checks for you, but I almost punched you, player. You bring some checks next time, sucker." <laughs> <laughs> He's like, this dude, is, "This dude is mean. He's a really mean guy." <laughs> no, you, you have to be, and as women too, women have to be the same way, even more so. Mm -hmm. Women have to be alert all the time. You wow. pump the gas. You go to you go to Costco, you go to work, you go get your hair done, wherever you gotta be alert all the time. Yeah. Keep your eye on the door, keep your, keep your purse near you, mm -hmm. and know where the back door is at. The front door, know where the back door is at. All mm -hmm. all the time. Let all me ask the you this. So the next time you go up and you do, you know, your stand-up, are you gonna yeah. stay, put a clause before you start, or how what, what are you gonna do? <laughs> clause like said, don't, don't slap me. <laughs> no, no. Or or do like Cedric the Entertainer? You, you slap me, I'm slapping you. Like, are you gonna have a clause, or you just not gonna say anything? Or, I mean, I'm gonna say anything. Most people, most people don't challenge me anyway. I really don't. I don't. You know, I mean, I'm not. I'm never. I'm. I'm not a bragger, but I carry myself a certain way to where, as you know, that I'm nice. I'm very nice. <laughs> but but uh, you just get a look. Yeah, I just get. A, I got that look that pops had. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, to give you a look, and you know, don't come over here. You know, mm -hmm. you know, hey, mm -hmm. and I, you know, you can diffuse a situation before it gets to that point, before it yeah. even comes to the stage, right? Yeah. So you really can, as a comedian, you can with okay. with the same skills you use to bag on somebody, you can use it to diffuse the problem. Okay. But you have to diffuse it before they try to come to the stage. Mm. When they get the stage, then that's a problem because that's your territory. People don't realize this, and the audience don't, don't realize. This, realize sometimes they don't realize that that's our workplace. Okay, stage is our job. Nobody comes yeah. in your job and do something to you, lay hands on you at your job. Right. right. Think about it. Just think if you were working in an office and somebody came in there and and from the streets, or from or from the next building. Oh came yeah. On and 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 tried to lay hands on you. Yeah. Don't do that. That's and that, and that's why the, that's why the, the, there was old joke a long time ago where a comedian would see somebody with their foot on the stage, feet on the stage, and they'd be like, "Hey, you in show business?" They say, "No, well, get your feet off the stage." Mm, that makes joke, sense. But you know, it makes sense. You know, it's one of the things. It's disrespectful. It's rude to be on the stage. Rude to put your feet on the stage. Rude to come on the stage mm -hmm. unless someone brought you to the stage. Like if a comedian brings you up, it's different. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. But if you just, just check, no. I've had people and I've had to check them way. Look, put it this way. If you come to the stage, you're going you're gonna to go down before you come up. Ah. The same way you come up, you ain't going to go back the same, but you're going to go back down. See, and, and, my, not, and my thing of it is, is that nowadays, most people, like, you know, my brother said, Chris Rock is 57. Most people that are getting up in age, they're not trying to fight you. You, you, you need to know, do they got a gun? Yeah. Because what's the, you put your hands on somebody, they could say, hey, it was self-defense. I mean, right, right. Ooh, it's crazy. That's true. That's true. So, so a friend of mine said this, he's on a cruise ship right now. And he said he might start carrying a knife every time you get on. <laughs> <laughs> Why would he carry a knife? He said, hey, man, I might start carrying a knife every time I perform. I say, hey, I don't blame you. You might carry something, you know. But I've never had that fear and I don't want to bring that kind of bad energy. Yeah, I would yeah. never do anything like that. I would never bring anything to a show or on stage. I just know that I know how to deal with certain situations. 
Mm -hmm. It depends on how, like, like Chris Rock delivered the joke perfectly. It wasn't, it was, there was no malice. There was no malice. The thing about it, you can't get that upset. He got, he, he, it was excessive. He got so upset. You would think he actually said something about his mother that was really yeah. bad, you know? And G.I. Jane was a good movie. It was a strong woman that was yeah. the first woman Navy SEAL. So it wasn't like he was Connor or Crackhead or something. You nah, know? Nah, he, was, he was just being himself, being funny. And it, and people thought it was a joke that was written, but it, people don't realize, and I know how Chris is, and most of us, a lot of us ad-lib. Yeah. You know, spontaneous. And that was, I'm sure that was spontaneous. I don't, I highly doubt it was really wrote out. Oh, it was. Will Packer said today, he, it, it was off script, that it was ad libs. Yeah. yeah, it was ad lib. I, I, I actually, because I do it, I saw it. And that's the first thing I thought, oh, he's, he's, mm -hmm. he just, he just bags on it, just hit her, you know? Mm -hmm. but, but they do that every Oscar. Right. Chris I mean, did, Billy Chris, Crystal. Chris did four, I think that four Oscars, something like that. Mm -hmm. Everybody know when you got a comedian on stage, you a target. Exactly. And if you're a target, shut your mouth and take it or leave. Just laugh about it. Yeah. yeah just and laugh at it, you know. And if it's that serious, go backstage or call them up. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. You could you could handle it different putting your just the, the bottom the bottom line is just don't put your hands on people because no. you put your hands on somebody, you don't get mad if they put their hands back on you. And, I, <laughs> and I'm I'm definitely that that type of person. I just would Absolutely. never agree. Never raised to to take mm. abuse. <laughs> I, yeah, and I like, what, I like what Jim Carrey said about it. He was real. The G with Jim Carrey. Yeah, he oh no, no. I, he said the same thing. Don't put your hands yeah. on them. Yeah, one yeah. of Sykes said the same thing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of us that do. Ricky Gervais. I'm sure he said he would. He would have said something else. But the bottom line is, as comedians, only thing we ask for of the public is please respect our art. Yeah, you ain't gonna like us. You even if you you ain't gotta pay to see us, you know. Some will like you, some will pay to see you, and some people would just don't want to have a good life or a good time or enjoy life or laugh. You'd be surprised. Some people have so much uh pent up anger and, and frustration and, and and just just always being evil inside to the point to where they can't enjoy life and have joy in their life. Yeah. And that's a problem. And those type people come to your comedy show. Wow. And when they come, you know, you, you never know what's going to happen. Mm. You know, I've had people, every comedian has had this. I've had people approach me after the show and say, you know, that joke you said, I didn't like it. Uh, they took offense to it. And I had to tell them, is, is, is it you? Is this joke? Is this joke about you? Is uh. it you? If it's not, then don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. you know, I understand where you're coming from, but it's just a joke. Right. It, it is well, what it is. If you're that sensitive, you don't need to be going to a comedy club. You don't. Know, you, can't, you can't go to a rock concert and you know how they had a mosh pit where the guys jump into the pit. Right. And you get, front and you get mad because somebody fell on you. <laughs> you shouldn't have been up there. Oh, man. You shouldn't be there. Right. You shouldn't be there. You should go ice skating or something. You shouldn't be out there talking about, yeah, this is cool. And then you, somebody jump on you. You go, man, I can't believe that person fell on me. Well, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh my gosh, that's so crazy. yeah, that's that's crazy. Mm -mm -mm. Well, Dean, you got to tell everybody uh, what you got in the works next, what you're working on. Oh snap! Okay. <laughs> 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 well, I'm actually I'm stripping down at Walmart, uh, aisle seventeen right now. <laughs> the Thunder review, and uh, if you want some peas. I got, we got peas. We got, we got, we got a uh, chicken nuggets in that section. I can hook you up with anything you need, anything you want, but make sure it's aisle 17. Cause that's the lucky aisle. That's the chocolate aisle. They call it chocolate aisle cause I'm performing on it every night between two and four in the morning. <laughs> if you get there around uh, three fifty nine, you might not get, it might be all sold out. <laughs> it might be sold out. You might be in trouble. might be mad. You, I can't believe. And no peas and nuggets. Dean said there was me peas and nuggets at this show. I can't believe. It. No, I uh, do a lot of writing. I have a lot. I, I, I've wrote, man, I wrote a lot over the pandemic, still okay. in the process of getting through this. Doing a lot of writing. Uh, I have a podcast coming out. Uh-oh. Uh, I, I, I won't say the name yet because I'm trying to keep it on a low low until I, until I push it out. But uh, as you know, I, I'm working on that. 
And I also I have some acting projects I'm working on too as okay. well. As okay. far as writing my own projects as well. So just 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 grinding, girl. Just grinding, staying fit, riding, you know, hitting the hitting the gym, doing what I love to do and staying alive and, and staying funny. Yes. Throughout all this time, throughout all these times, just staying funny. That's because it. The thing you have to realize that although Chris Rock went through that, he still had shows to do. Right. So he still had to go out and be funny after getting humiliated mm -hmm. in front of millions of people and getting slapped. He still had to go up and be funny. Mm -hmm. That's what people don't understand about what we do as comedians, that there's nothing in, in any uh, profession Whereas you have to you have to make other people happy when you're not happy. Ah, uh, okay. You have to make other people's laugh when you don't when you don't feel like laughing. Chris Rock didn't feel like laughing, but he still had to continue doing what he was doing. And right now he's going through it and he still has to go do it, get out there and do it. Mm. And a true professional and someone who's experienced and a veteran in the game knows how to do that. Ah. Uh. That's deep, you know, and that's mm -hmm. that. That's what makes it so unique because you have to be able to to heal yourself, mm -hmm. which is therapeutic being on stage, as well as heal others at the same time. Wow, that's deep. So yeah, because it's your job, just like it's our job to go to work. You're right. That's yeah. deep. Yeah, you got to tuck that away, and you Ooh. have to do. It. Mm -hmm. That's why people think uh, think that. Uh, it's just a joke. I mean, uh, jokes are this, and you should you should ban this, and you shouldn't say that. And, you know, people don't realize the power of comedy, the power of laughter. Yes, it's the huge. power of laughter. When you come out the womb as a baby, one of the first things you do is smile. You don't speak first. You're not oh, listening yeah. to music. Mm -hmm. You're not. You're not. You're not trying to figure out what you're gonna do uh, for a living, and you're yeah. You know your your your, your finances. Mm -hmm. Who's gonna be your friends? The mm -hmm. only thing you do is you get out and you smile. That's it. That's powerful to know that that God put that in you from birth. Mm. So for all the people out there who want to slap somebody because they made them somebody else smile or made didn't make them smile, they need to realize that if it's not for you, just get up and go. Just leave. Exactly. Just leave. Just get up. Go. Write a note. Say something. Uh, I don't care if you heckle back. I'll kill you, but I don't mind if you heckle back because I'll get you still with the mic. But I would, I would, I would prefer you having a banter with someone and speak your mind. I did a show recently. <clears throat> uh, this place called the Comedy Act Theater, which is where Robin Harris used to always perform back in the oh, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was a guy sitting up front, a brother, a couple brothers. It was a black venue. It was like two white people and a couple Mexicans, but predominantly black. And there was a brother sitting up front and I was talking about women. And I was telling a joke about how women, how women rule or women, women run the house. So women have control over men, <laughs> which is ironic because Jada. But yeah. <laughs> I was doing a joke about that. And the guy was like, well, you know, women came from men and blah, blah, blah. I said, dude, hold on. I said, I understand where you're coming from, but think about this. You have a beautiful sister sitting behind you and you wouldn't be here without a mother. You came from mm -hmm. a woman. OK. Mm -hmm. And once I broke it down to him, although, you know, telling jokes and broke it down to him, she got up and she rubbed his face. Sister girl, she's rubbed his face. Wow. And I said, you like that, huh? Wow. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> you want a man to rub your face? Mm mm. You want to rub your own face? Mm -mm. But a woman just came and rubbed your face. Wow, that's so deep. You cannot discredit and you cannot say that that a woman is, impo it is important because women are important. Mm -hmm. And she stood up and she did, and and and, and it, the switch just turned just like that. And after the show, he came and gave me a hug and said, yeah, you're right. Want to, want to, want to. And we hugged it out and I was just, you know, it was, but that's how you deal with it. Yeah. That's how you deal with it. That's what comedy is about. You can have uh, conversation back and forth. I don't have a, you know, some comedians want you to not speak because they stay on stage and they just go boom, 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 and they don't deal with the crowd. That's everybody has their own style. Don't get me wrong. But most comedians, 
that don't that don't have that style, we love the interaction. Oh. The interaction, the interaction is 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 fuel for us. It motivates us, it pushes us, it gets our juices flowing, and we're able to deliver a great show to you because we have brought you into our situation, our our, our uh, realm. We okay. have brought you into our circle right there, and you mm. part, and you go, oh man, that was fun. I'm glad, man. You know, man, thank you for bringing us, bringing me into your world, and blah blah blah. But that's, but that's what it's about is being able to have that give and take. Wow. And there was no give and take in the Oscars, you know. Chris, Chris gave something, gave something, and, and Will didn't want to take it. Even though he tried to take it, he didn't want to take it. But it wasn't his fault. I don't, I don't blame Will 100% because you have to realize if Jada wasn't there, Chris would have never got slapped. No, Will would have kept on laughing. Yep. Kept on laughing. Mm-hmm. So that goes to show you, you know, that's the power yeah. of a woman. She can, hey, go slap him. But you're right. But let me, let me put another twist on that, though. Mm-hmm. The power of a good woman. Bam. Really encourage that exactly. She would not want her man to no. be physical like that. The only way she want a man to be physical is if he's really protecting her. Right. Somebody's trying to kill her or hurt her. Hammer. Exactly. The joke? That ain't, that ain't good. That ain't good. Yeah. <laughs> That's not, good. not at all. But uh, thank you for pointing that out. You're 100 right, cuz 100 right. You're right. Man. Oh thank my you. gosh. Thank you so we much. Gotta, <laughs> yes, we got to have you back on, sir. Right. I will. Uh, I have. I. Pretty soon my podcast will drop. I'll come back on and I'll let you know about it. And, yeah, you know, you know. Definitely, definitely. I got to get you on it too. You know that, right? Oh, Lord. You yeah. know, look at you hosting like a pro. Come on. Oh, I, I, I like being in front of the camera. In front of the camera. You know, you do, a good, you do a great job. I don't like being in front of the camera. That's why I'm trying to get, you know. But you ain't nervous or nothing. You be getting it in. I don't know. I, I need a partner because, you know, I be getting nervous. I want the attention. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Well, well, Kaz, you stay safe out there, and I, I appreciate everything that you do because laughter is good for the soul. You keep doing definitely, it, definitely keep doing it. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You do keep doing yeah. the same thing. Oh well, I love you, and we'll be in touch. Okay. I love you too. All right. Okay. See you sure. later. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> oh wow, you guys! So you guys heard it from um the the comedians has been doing it for years um and i wanted them to ha- come on and kind of give their perspective and you know get you guys to laugh a little as well so um thank you uh cousin dean austin actor comedian and my brother actor and comedian uh donnie or donald let so they've been doing it for many many years and um anybody that can put a smile on your face um Hey, I'm all for it. I love Chris Rock. Chris, we hope you um, heal from this and move past it. And and will we all make mistakes? But brother, you was wrong. You need to you need to come out in the cameras and show some remorsefulness. I I, I don't know, but um, I love comedians because I love to laugh. And um, before you know, years ago, I used to go to comedy shows. So you know, comedians out there, y'all keep doing what you're doing. Don't let any but don't let this deter you whatsoever. So anywho, as we close out the show. I just want to leave you guys with one uh, positive thought as I do every week. And basically you guys, you you know, we're in springtime, right? Uh, No matter what state you live in, it's spring. And so we're in it. But this quote says spring is coming time for some cleaning, remove all the self doubt, worry, jealousy, regret, anger, guilt, or any negative emotions that are holding you back. And that is from Nanette Matthews. So definitely put that into use and just use the springtime to just clean out all the negative feelings and and just get ready for um, some warm temperatures. And I want you guys to be safe out there because there's a new variant out there. They don't know how serious it is, but just be safe out there. It's a new one. Um, And remember, do one good thing for one person each day and you can affect 365 lives. You guys, if you want to purchase my books, go on Amazon or go on my website at detailproduct.net and know that if no one has told you they love you, know that I love you. And with those words, I'm out.